What's up, designers? Welcome back to the studio. So we spent some time last week kind of working through some old magazines and chopping them up and getting some rough ideas in our head about what we want to assemble. What kind of images um, are you attracted to? Is it colors? Is it content? Is it sort of a theme? Um, and then we did sort of our first sort of cut-paste collage and we stuck them all down on a background. Our most basic arrangement um, was sort of calling for a couple things, right? A background uh, or a ground is what I called it. A subject, uh, in this case, subjects and some sort of object and if you know you didn't have any one of those pieces you could substitute with drawing in this case um, use the background of a sky three surfers who I switched over into trapeze artists and then drew in uh, a sort of trapeze bar I'm not even sure what you call that but I ended up cutting out a whole bunch more pieces along the way things I was kind of sort of interested in weird old classic car ads and things um, and I scanned a lot of them and the reason I scanned them is because um, I knew that I was going to be committing some of these down um, with glue but now that I'm over in the computer I can sort of take a couple uh, take a look at some of these image scans the idea would be that I have access to these uh, now to do some digital work um, some of these are really dense uh, image scans like I have uh, multiple images on one scan and some of them are a little bit more sparse uh, it's just one design some of them I'm responding to the content again some of them are responding to the design layout or color uh, it really kind of depends at this point in the semester I'm kind of excited to see where you guys go with this project I'm going to use these three dudes here uh, as my example uh, for how to do some digital cutting I'm going to drag this file right over into a program we haven't used much called Adobe Photoshop if you don't have Photoshop down here in your dock, uh, you likely have it hiding over here in your finder. So go to applications and uh, it should be up here at the top, the Adobe programs. If you're using a PC, uh, it should probably be in your start menu. Now once you're in uh, Photoshop, we're not going to get too deep into the software, uh, but what I do want to walk through today is um, some of these selection tools up here. Essentially, we need to make some cutouts of these guys very much the same way that we made cutouts um, from the magazine craft. Now don't worry, it's not going to be nearly as hard as you know all that really fine detail work with the X-Acto knife, but some of the same rules apply, right? If you want a really accurate cut here, uh, well, we can do some really accurate cuts in, uh, in Photoshop. Now, if you've scanned your images like I did against a white background, uh, your life is going to be a whole lot easier. Uh, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's check out this toolbar over here on the left. And um, I want you to find your quick select tool. Keyboard shortcut for that is W. If your magic wand tool pops up first, uh, just kind of click and hold on the tool like I've got here and grab quick select. This is probably the, um, the most straightforward, kind of like the most dummy proof way that Photoshop uh, is going to allow you to select out something like, for example, the white space around my guys here. Uh, the quick select tool is going to behave like a brush. If you use the keyboard shortcut brackets and braces to sort of make that brush larger or smaller, the effects of that brush will take, you know, will be um, proportional. If I want to get in a little bit closer to do some more specific cutting, I'll do a command plus and zoom in a little bit. and. Uh, correspondingly make my brush a bit smaller and you'll see that if I'm, uh, if I'm sort of dragging that brush along in this sort of white area Photoshop is just sort of automatically snapping to or finding the edges of my cut paper that's really handy uh, if you didn't photograph your subject against a white background um, it's going to be a little bit trickier right this tool finds areas of high contrast and it snaps the selection edge right next to it now, you can also do a really great thing, like let's say down here I want to do some detail selecting around his fingers. I can not only add, but I can remove selection. So it's a little bit difficult to see here in the video, but if I hold the keyboard shortcut option on PC, that's Alt, um, I get a minus sign inside of my selection window. So with a real small arrow, I can kind of deselect some areas right around the finger and then reselect and deselect. Essentially, I'm pushing and pulling this scrolling marquee tool, which um, the scrolling marquee, this kind of marching ants line here, is really, you know, it's the exact selection that, um, that I made with the cutout. So as I push this line closer and closer into position, my uh, cutouts get more and more accurate. I'm going to back out here because while I really like this tool, um, I, it's, you know, it could get me there. It's a little bit like using a really fine tooth comb to, co to go work over something that could be a little bit more straightforward. I'm going to do a keyboard shortcut command D to deselect. And I'm going to go up here to my options bar and click select. 
color range. In this case, the color range all the way around these three gentlemen is pretty much white. And so I'm gonna take my little eyedropper here and click in the white, and then I'll just adjust my fuzziness here. The fuzziness is gonna sort of um, tighten or loosen the selection around these guys. Let me show you what I mean. When I click OK now, it's gonna automatically snap that selection right to the edge of these guys. And it's not perfect. It grabbed some pixels over here on top of his back. It maybe didn't make as close of a selection line in his armpits as I really needed to. So I'll Command, delete, uh, Command D, deselect that one more time. Go to Color Range, select again the white space, and this time turn up the fuzziness. Um, that way I can kind of get more of the tight detail around them. But you notice that as I increase this, I'm actually starting to see more of the selection on their back. I'm kind of balancing out, you know, the selection between getting a tight enough selection around them, uh, but not getting too much of these other skin tones. Now I'm going to come back in with my quick select tool and just sort of clean up around the edges. Uh, this is a really handy way to just sort of um, fine tune selections uh, as, a, um, as I'm sort of working on the fly here in Photoshop. Uh, if you didn't have a really great selection and you're getting a, and you're just like having a really frustrating time making these selections happen in Photoshop, just choose a different photograph. Um, there's no there's no point in really kind of belaboring these selections right now. Uh, it's a cool trick to learn, uh, but we've got a collage to make and not so many days to make it. So work as carefully as you can to get a nice close selection here, um, but only spend about one class period or so getting these selections. What we need to do then is actually isolate these from Photoshop. Now, I want you to isolate them individually, and I don't want a white background. So what we've been working on here to refine this selection is, um, is essentially I'm trying to get a selection of the white space around this document. And there's a few things that we could do. We could just sort of copy and paste our characters out. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to delete the white space. To delete anything in Photoshop like this, I need to double click the background layer to unlock it. Uh, once it's unlocked, I can tap backspace or delete, and you'll see that it automatically snaps out all of my white background. In Photoshop, this sort of checkerboard is a good way of telling me that I have um, eliminated anything that there. It's, it's a, the checkerboard tells me that it's a transparent background now. Command D, deselect, and you can see that I've, oops, I missed a couple spots on his back here. It's looking a little thin. And I also missed this giant white gap underneath his arm here. I'm not gonna go to the trouble of kind of continuing to pull those out, but what I will show you is how to save these guys so that they're not only individual files, but they also maintain their transparency. Uh, so if I could crop him out using the crop tool, keyboard shortcut C, and I just kind of pull in the edges of my photograph, uh, this is sort of one way to, um, to eliminate extra content here in an image. If you can crop it down to be that small, I double click, and that kind of isolates my one individual here. But if the crops are more complicated, like for example, if I was trying to get a hold of this middle guy and I just could not get a hold of this shoulder here, uh, there are other ways that I can kind of crop out uh, with a little bit looser design. If I use the lasso tool, keyboard shortcut for that is L, and I could just sort of draw a circle around this character here, and it doesn't even have to be a very accurate circle, just so long as I'm not touching anybody else. And now that I've got that selection all the way around him, I'll do a Command C, Command V, that's the copy paste keyboard shortcut. And then I'll just come over to my layers palette and you see how it pasted another version of him up top, another instance. I'll just turn off the background layer. That way I can real easily kind of get in, move my crops right to where I need them. I don't have to worry about anybody else kind of getting in the way and double click that crop. Now when I save this one, I'll do a file, save as. I'm going to not save it out as a Photoshop document, but as a PNG. PNG files maintain their transparent backgrounds. I'm also gonna slightly change the name here. I'll just add like a dash one at the end. That way when I save it, it doesn't replace the original file type. Now let me go back to that original folder here and take a look at what I've got. I have my original file here and just above it, 
I have my PNG, which has its transparent background. I still have this oops mark here where I forgot to take out that guy. Uh, but what I want you to do is make some digital cutouts, slice out the backgrounds, and get ready for a whole round, whole second round of digitally collaging these pieces. I'm excited to see what you guys got going in Photoshop, and uh, I'll catch up with you in the studio. Oh, and one more thing. You want to make sure, especially if you're working with an image that has a lot of um, density, to uh, edit undo some of these, uh, these edits. Command-Z will kind of step you back in time a few clicks, and that way you can just go ahead and recrop some of these other guys out without having to completely start that project over again. I'll catch up with you guys in the studio.